everybody, we're just going to kind of shoot from the hip today in our podcast, but I think you're going to like it. We're going to ask some questions. We're going to show you something that's going to kind of shake you up a little bit, but I think is very cool. And um, yeah, I think things are trending in a way that is very, very good. I'm hopeful. So I hope you get a lot out of this. Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this uh, episode of our podcast together, getting together and looking at what's going on in the world around us from the Word of God, biblical perspective. And um, today, I think you're just going to have some fun. Uh, it's It's been a, I, I've got to tell you, it's been a grueling, um, I don't know, five or six weeks for me. The uh, the book now is behind us. It's, it's out. It's gone. And uh, really really glad that we're over it <laughs> because um, just going around and, and being in various locations and book signings and stuff. Look, these are wonderful problems to have. I'm not complaining. But um, back home uh, at length now, and uh, God bless, I just give you this report, God bless tremendously meeting so many, 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 many hundreds and hundreds of people, if not more, I remember um, in, Del in the Dallas, Texas area at a book signing where I, I signed over 800 books in two hours. I thought my arm was going to fall off. But uh, Living in the Days of Deception is now out and about, and uh, it's available wherever books are sold, and, and we're grateful. So uh, getting into this, uh, let's have some fun right now. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to uh, have the guys queue up. Uh, a video that is that is something that is being coming increasingly not surprising. How's that sound? It's becoming increasingly not surprising. And before we get into it, I'm going to read uh, a portion of scripture to you that is, I believe, uh, the answer to what I'm about to show you. Now, for some of you who are not Christians or you don't want to hear from the Bible, I'm going to ask you to just kind of man up or woman up for a moment and take it. I'm going to give you some scripture and go ahead, judge it all you want. You can attack it, throw rocks at it, whatever you want. That's fine. Just listen through because you're going to want to know what the Bible says in light of what I'm going to show you and then talk to you about what's happening in our current world right now. You may find it incredibly encouraging. And so, listen, here's where we start. Uh, John chapter 3, and I'm going to begin uh, in verse 15, John three fifteen, And allow me to read this for just a bit. Uh, Whoever believes in him, Jesus is speaking. Speaking of himself, by the way, it's interesting, um, second or even third person verbiage. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world or the word for can also be translated because, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. Listen up, everybody. But he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. The Bible here teaches, and I'll continue in a moment. It's not that Jesus now condemns you for not believing in him, that word means that we are all condemned already. By default, you and I are condemned for having not believed. By default, mankind is condemned. The Bible teaches that man is lost in his sin. Okay? And by default, we are condemned to hell. Salvation, the gospel, redemption, is what is, is, what is extended to us by the love of God— 
through the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of that revelation or transaction of new thought is by the Holy Spirit. Very, very important. The Father provides, the Son pays, and the Holy Spirit illuminates you to come out of damnation, out of condemnation, and into salvation. So John 3, 19 says, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and, lo and, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. People love their sin because their deeds are evil. They do evil deeds because they're not in the light, they're in darkness, and they love it. Look, be honest. Um, before I was a Christian, I loved my sin. And if you're not a Christian right now, you love your sin. When you become a Christian, one of the big signs about being a Christian is not goosebumps, right? It's not, you know, little tingly glitters and pixie dust up your spine. Nope. It's becoming keenly aware that you're a sinner. That's right. You heard me right. Christians who are saved now and going to heaven are very keenly aware of their sin. And uh, we live like that for, uh, for the rest of our lives on earth. But listen to this. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light. And that's what we're going to talk about. And some clips I'm going to show you in a moment. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God or that they have now become aware that their life is actually being lived up before God. Now, I'm, I'm baiting you right now uh, because the clip I'm going to show you is, is quite awesome. It's, it's quite fascinating. But um, let me set it up this way. Um, in about a week or so, we're going to give you another uh, podcast and I'm going to discuss... Uh, the um, the fallout, the the rhetoric, the reporting, the news, uh, the stuff that's surrounding my prayer that I offered up to the Lord in Congress. It has created a media firestorm. Uh, it is it's crazy uh, what's going on and what's being said, and it's quite awesome. And I'll address it. Very soon in detail, I'll give you some backstory stuff that you need to hear. But I'm going to preface it by just simply saying this, that uh, what you're reading about uh, online and in the news and some of the reports uh, regarding the prayer I offered in Congress, uh, there are media agencies that are talking about how insane I am, how wrong I am, and how much of a uh, Christian, no, sorry, it's new today that I am a radical Christian nationalist. They've added radical. Well, I'm going to be showing you guys in a week or two that there are those who have gone before us. Some of them are household names, I would hope, in your life, that, um, that made my prayer look like a Sunday school prayer to a bunch of five-year-olds, um, but would be very, very applauded. Uh, over the last 250 years of our nation. But here's, the, here's what I wanted to bring up today. I had uh, congressional members come to me, and I've had some congressional members reach out to me since and say, in fact, one of the congressional members reached out to me just recently and said, Pastor Jack, it's to, to the best of my recollection, this has been the first authentic Christian prayer that I have heard in my over 12 years of being in Congress. That's sad. But a lot of people thanked me for praying a Christian prayer that was biblically grounded, biblically rooted. And therein lies the problem. But that is not for today, but it is part of what's going on in our world around us. Everybody listen to this. So, um, Many of you remember the NFL doing the take the knee junk, the BLM junk, all that stuff junk, uh, you know, just really pathetic. And that's all gone now, by the way. You notice that it, it, it's a fad. It's just it's just it's something that was a 
cool for the moment. Uh, but all along the way, during the way, there were Christian athletes in these various arenas of their sport expertise. But, um, you know, you didn't see it in the in NASCAR, by the way, <laughs> because NASCAR, I think people who go to NASCAR events, carry shotguns or handguns, you know. Uh, it's just redneck, Americana, uh, America flag. Did, uh, are you aware that at NASCAR they pray before they start the engines? I mean, it's red, white, and blue down home America. Uh, America, and it's 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 cool and all that stuff. But so the 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 take a knee BLM stuff had no inroads to NFL, but it didn't do all that good, by the way, in, in the Major League Baseball either. I'm not sure how well it did in basketball. I don't really care about basketball, so I can't report on that. Uh, but it 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 seemingly had its big stronghold in the NFL. But but notice it's gone now. It's gone now. But what is trending in uh, interviews with NFL players? What did Brock Purdy have to say? It's the same thing that uh, CJ, I think it's right, guys. Is it CJ Stroud? What did he have to say? Um, what did uh, Patrick Mahomes have to say? What are some of the other guys? Uh, McCaffrey. What did he have to say? Uh, and it's growing. What, what's the, what's trending right now in the NFL, big time, is the NFL and, and ESPN trying to, trying to get an interview without somebody mentioning Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus, it's amazing how much Jesus is being talked about in the NFL right now. And it's, it's, it's building, it's building. Uh, why? What's happening? Because when we go through our spasmatic, uh, trending, woke things, it, they always die out. Be, why? Because they have no foundation. Most of the stuff that you and I hear is rooted in lies. Okay, and some of those things we're going to expose on later podcasts, where somebody says this, turn, it's a it's a total lie, and we're going to show you that. We're, it's going to be fun. But the NFL, you can see uh, clips now where. Live TV, uh, C.J. Stroud will be interviewed and give glory to Jesus Christ, thank God as Lord and Savior, and then quickly, within minutes, uh, NBC or ESPN or Fox or somebody will will edit the Jesus stuff out and and then play the interview. So terrified. They're so terrified of Jesus. It's actually beautiful. What's going on? People are coming to the light. That's what's happening. God's word that I just read to you, there are those who are waking up and they're coming to the light. And they are beginning to see that their deeds have been done in darkness and that they want truth. And so I'm going to show you this clip, okay? And so guys, uh, go ahead and, and play this clip and we'll get back to it. But I think... As time rolls on, people are going to understand the need to have some sort of divine structure to things, some sort of belief in the sanctity of love and of truth. And a lot of that comes from religion. A lot of people's moral compass and the guidelines that they've used to follow, to live a just and righteous life has come from religion. And unfortunately, a lot of very intelligent people, they dismiss all of the positive aspects of religion because they think that the stories are mere superstitious fairy tales that, you know, they're, they have no place in this modern world. And, you know, we're inherently good and your ethics are based on your old moral compass and we all have one. And that's not necessarily true. We need to, we need Jesus. <laughs> I think for real. Like, if you came back now, it'd be great. Like, Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back right now, now's a good time. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah. So, wow. Um, there you go. From the most unlikely uh, guy, Joe Rogan. Uh, listen, if you ever listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, um, he uses Jesus' name a lot, but he's not praying. <laughs> okay. And you might say, well, I think they're joking around. It doesn't matter if they're joking around or not. By, by the way, I don't think they're joking around. I think that Joe Rogan 
uh, is starting to come to the light. I'm not saying he's a Christian, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that he's going to become a Christian. I'm saying that the insanity that is out there has so overplayed its hand like sin does. You know, sin does not have self-control. Sin goes bonkers crazy. If you give sin an inch, it will take 10 miles. And so that's, that's what's happening right now. We see this happening with Dr. Phil, by the way. Dr. Phil has been making some remarkable statements that's causing us to question what's going on, whatever it is, it's really good. And let's see where Dr. Phil lands regarding this, this path that he's journeying on. Well, here's what's fun about it. Both Joe Rogan is actually talking about light. In fact, he even says, we need Jesus to come back right now. Trust me, dear Joe, listen, we love your soul. <laughs> For your sake, we hope Jesus doesn't come back today because you're not ready, Joe. We're praying that you get ready, but, but your passion and your comments about we need Jesus Christ to come back now. We understand what you're saying. I mean, just know this, you're not ready yet, but we hope you do get ready. Uh, but something's up, everybody. Something's going on. Have you noticed more and more Hollywood actors either A, being black screened or blackballed because they're Christians? In fact, in one of the left, in the latest Left Behind movie, the guy that is the Antichrist uh, in the movie, I think it's, this is the one, is this the one Kevin Sorbo did? Uh, the, the actor is a great actor. I love this guy. I've always loved his acting. It's fantastic. He was in Top Gun as one of the, uh, one of the uh, officers. Um, he's a Christian, and he was basically ostracized from the Hollywood scene. And he was also a guy who said, I'm not going to kiss or go into some sex scene uh, in movies. Uh, I'm married. I'm not going to do that to my wife. I'm married, and I don't believe I'm not going to do it. This guy was basically banned from Hollywood movies, even though he's an epic actor. Uh, but now he's been popping up in, in Christian films. And you say, ha-ha, Christian films, what a joke. Let's talk about Christian films for a moment. Faith-based Christian films. Listen to this. The last, just based on the numbers, the last movie that you'd want to invest in these days is a Disney film. Look at the numbers. If you want to invest in a film, you're going to want to avoid certain actors. And the list is pretty long, but I can tell you this from a movie insider, very, very deep insider, that for an example, there are three movies that were uh, Movies that had a certain, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to get sued by him because he's such a mean, ugly guy. But his three movies, uh, this guy's name now is, is, uh, is death to the profitability of a movie. Uh, and he's been around for decades. He's a household movie name and nobody wants him in their films anymore because he's so rabid on his political views that his movies are People aren't going. People are not going to see them, and so this guy now his move. There's three movies he's done, and they never made it to the screens, because the the producers, the film, the film companies said we're just going to stop it because this guy's death to our profits. And here's what's amazing. Um, did you know that Disney's supposedly supposed to be getting away from their LBGTQ transgenderism? Uh, inserts into movies and into cartoons into what didn't they try to uh, somehow tamper with the gender of buzz and they had weirdness in buzz stuff like that or light year was it buzz or light year light year okay uh pfft, tanked things like this going on tanking listen parents are saying no nope. no you guys are not worth it anymore you guys aren't worth it in fact we're not even going to go to your uh, fairy tale magic kingdom anymore more of a more fairy than it is magic kingdom and people are done with it and i love it and uh so what's happening is if you want to make big money then invest in a christian or faith-based film did you know that you should see the percentages in fact i gotta get these numbers for you so if you invest in some uh, blankety blank film with with some actor that's out there 
Uh, they 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 spend six hundred million dollars to make it, and it and it and it it's it's released, and it and it only winds up making uh, six hundred and eighty million. So I guess eighty million. You got to divide up among all the the actors and the players and the union and everybody. That's that's called a loss. Versus a Christian film that might be a Christian film that's 30 million, 40 million, and it's making 120 million. It's making 150 million. You say 150 million for a film, that's nothing. But when it took you 20 or 30 million to make it, those are huge margins. And the Christian faith based industry is exploding. And it's amazing. And the theaters are packing out. What's going on? Just wait, by the way. I'm not at liberty. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement to a film that's going to be coming out in August. And I want you to remember this podcast because I can't talk about it right now. I predict this film is going to blow up the box office. It's so good. It's so powerful. It is so heartwarming. You're going to you're going to laugh, you're going to cry, you're going to have joy and you're going to hug your kids and you're going to kiss your wife, you're going to kiss your husband, you're going to walk out of the theater and you're going to say, "Man, I'm going to go get more people. They're I'm bringing them back." By the way, I can tell you this, it it's a Christian film and uh, the corporation, which is a household name, Four Letter Corporation, they said, this is so good. We're dropping this worldwide, all theaters everywhere. No select theaters for this one. It's too good. Guess what? It's a Christian film. Christian film. By the way, this year, I do believe it's this year. Mel Gibson's coming out with The Resurrection closer to the uh, uh, November. But that, listen, those who prepare for the movie industry, there's a lot of work that goes behind scenes before a movie ever gets out. How many straws do you need at, at each theater that's going to have this movie? Did you know that there's a science to have the amount of oil per gallon that all these corporate wheel and wheeler, wheelers and dealers, they view the movie in advance. They all talk about how much syrup are we going to need from Coca-Cola? How, how many Cokes do you think we're going to sell? This movie's going to be big. We're going to need to have this many buckets of, I'm not joking. It is an actual science. And they're talking about Mel Gibson's forthcoming film being the biggest film ever in time, ever, ever. And many have already seen portions of the resurrection. I bring this up to tell you that something's going on. And you might be aware just at the time of this podcast, I heard a, a news clip on ABC News radio that the film industry in Hollywood, in conjunction with the county of Los Angeles that they are dropping fees and rates to film production companies because Hollywood is becoming a ghost town for film production. People are moving their film production to Europe or to Canada. And so the County of Los Angeles and the Hollywood film industry, they are trying to make it more of an incentive to make their films back here uh, in the LA area. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Hopefully it doesn't. I think the whole thing should just rot and fall into the pit where it belongs. Um, but that, be that as it may, um, I want to end, I want to end by saying this, that if you have an opportunity to invest in a Christian film, um, you might want to think about that. Um, after after seeing this uh, this private screening of, of a film, uh, the film that shall not be mentioned at this time, um, for the first time in my life, I've actually thought about investing in the making of of a film like this. And you say, well, you know, what, what, to make money. Well, I'm not stupid. Of course, to make some money. But that's not the main reason. The message was so awesome. And it's so needed for the American family and for the American kid. For the broken home. For the marriage. 
The message is incredible. Which leads me to my, my final, my final thing here. So there is only God could have done this just in the last several weeks. Living in the days of deception went public in every bookstore. It was already doing fantastic on pre-orders on Amazon. And it shot several times, not twice, not three times, several times into Amazon's top 100. Who else? USA. USA Today. USA Today, top 38, whatever it was. Just great success. That's amazing. Um, the prayer in Congress. Uh, opened up uh, th this media craziness. Um, and then the fact that um, I'm encouraging people to vote pro-life. I'm, I'm encouraging people to read the platforms of the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. And as Christians, cast your vote accordingly to the pro-life topic, which is really easy to do because the Democrat uh, platform is pro death, pro kill the baby, and the Republican platform is pro life, save the baby. So, what does that mean as a Christian? It means I have to vote Republican. And that's got all kinds of people all bent out of shape. Uh, news trucks have pulled up. They want they want an interview. They want to talk. How dare you say that? How can you say that? You're endorsing candidates. Um, so. All this firestorm has all happened within the confines of a very, very short period of time, which has now led to interviews with various news agencies and uh, various radio programming and, and various podcasters. And um, I want to leave you with this. Every one of them have asked me this question. And most recently it was Sebastian Gorka. And Gorka asked this question. And his question is what, uh, is what others are echoing. Mike, uh, listen, I love Dan Ball. If you don't follow Dan Ball at O-N, you ought to follow Dan, Dan Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. He's awesome. He asked the same question. He said, where's the pastors right now? With everything that's going on, human trafficking, abortion, your prayer being in Congress condemned by 26 members of Congress, Pastor Jack, where's the pastors? Where's the pastors standing up and speaking up? Where's the pastors at this hour? Where's the pastors? I was asked on one of America's largest radio networks, the, past, the, the radio host sa said, Pastor, can I ask you this question? At a time like this, Where's the church? And why isn't the church more prominent at such a dark time as this? And I said to him, you're going to have to ask the pastors that because there's no doubt there's a day coming when Jesus is going to ask the pastors, where were you? Where were you when all of these terrible things were being implemented in our, in our world around us? And so I want to end with this, just to, uh, just to upset people, just to get them furious. Not you, but the, the people that have no idea who we are. So one income poop from uh, the Freedom From Religion group. What a funny group. This is hilarious. Are you ready for this? The Freedom From Religious, the Freedom From Religion group is a 501c3 religious organization. Did you know that? Isn't that awesome? Freedom from religion. Hey, can we have a 501, uh, 501c3 tax exemption that's for religious organizations? <laughs> that guy said, that pastor who prayed in Congress and that pastor who's encouraging people to vote pro-life, so vote Republican because they their platform has pro-life He's clearly wanting to run for political office. What a knucklehead. I told you guys before, I've been asked twice to run for political office. I'm never going to do that. Well, I shouldn't say never. If God tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. But why would I step down from the pulpit that I have to minimize my voice? That would be ridiculous. Nope, that's a lie. 
And the fact that I don't know anything about American history, that the pastor believes that America was founded on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, what a dummy. I read the Mayflower Compact. I read the Constitution. I read the Bill of Rights. I read the Declaration of Independence. I've read the Founding Fathers. Yep, I don't know anything about American history. For Politico to have a reporter say what she said, and maybe we can drop that clip into this as well, where that, re in fact, let's do that. I'm going to pause right now. We're, we're going to drop, drop that clip in from this highly esteemed Politico reporter. Listen to this. But the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists is very different, mm -hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. I Look, I honestly feel sorry for her. But let's be serious. If she is a journalist for Politico... She's probably making high six-digit income. Wow, did I pick the wrong career. That woman has never read one iota of American history or the founding fathers' own documents that they gave us to create this government. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, right? Think about that. All men have been created by God, that we are equal. And we've been endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. <laughs> that, oh, I don't know what to say about that, except stupid's loose. It's everywhere right now. It's in the air. I think some people are taking stupid pills. Good advice is for you to read your Bible and to dive into some good old American history. Read Thomas Jefferson, read George Washington, read Sam Adams, read John Adams. You know what? You can start by reading 1776 by David McCullough. There's hardly any reference in there to God, so don't worry, you're not gonna get freaked out, but read about it. And then from there, if that's okay, if you can survive 1776 by David McCullough, you can graduate to A Life, Samuel Adams, A Life by Ira Stoll. Try reading that. You can also try reading Forged in Faith. Forged in Faith. Try reading that book. And there's a whole lot of others if you want them. I'll give you a bibliography of books that 10 of them, you'll be an expert in American history. Something that the people at Politico have never done. Listen, until next time, you guys, God bless you. We believe this. It's time for us to live out what it is that we believe in. It's time for real life. If this has blessed you, hit the subscribe button. Give us a five-star uh, rating, a thumbs up. Tell people about it. And until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you right back here. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Thank you.